Hi everyone, welcome to the Rogers School. We are going to give you a virtual tour of this magnificent building. This building was built in 1885 and the purpose of the building was to actually put all the kids into one school building rather than having several small schools all over the town. Education was very important and through the generous donation of our benefactor, Henry Huddleston Rogers, we have this beautiful building behind me. In 1883, it came out. This building is 136 years old, and it was built, and it was put in the paper that it will be built with brick and stone to outlast any building. And as you can see, it's still standing. The building educated kids for 128 years. It was closed in 2013. Sad, but things have changed in 136 years. So the new schools were built. But by no means is this school out to pasture. So come inside and let me show you a few of the places inside the school and you'll be amazed like I was with the architect of this building. So come on, we're going to go for a tour. Okay, we're going to start here in the new addition. When they found out that we were having more children, obviously in the town, and that the school was getting very tight, they decided to build an addition. This addition was built in 1957. So this was also built of brick to withstand, you know, years of use. So this building right here is 64 years old and it educated the kids for 56 years. Also closed in 2013 when the school closed. This building consists of four classrooms, office, reception area. Everybody would come in now this side it also has a large gym that they use for the auditorium with a stage. And of course, later on, it was the cafeteria. So this place housed the younger grades. So kindergarten, one, two, three, four, I do believe that was the, the way it went. So we can take a walk to show you what the addition looks like. The reception area, of course, you would have to be buzzed in to come into the school. This was um, a place for whatever the kids did and not work and things like that. Down the hall, you would have the nurse's station, the principal's office, and of course, we have things packed in here right now, but a very large stage, very large gym, and it was in the auditorium also. So once we had to have school lunch, the cafeteria was also in this, this section. So everything, even the curtains are still up there and they're beautiful. So this building, it, it, along with the older building, as you can see, was very well built. So down the hall, you have your principal's office and like I said, the nurse's office. Down in here, you can get on and off the stage and the little room on the side is where they prepared the lunch. Now the lunches did come in from the high school and they just served it to the kids. So down the hall here is where we would get, oops, sorry, I shut off the lights. We would get to the other classrooms. And that's obviously they would go out to the uh, playground, which is brand new, well, fairly new. And as you can see, we have our town people working on the baseball field and um, whatever happens, the plans are to keep the playground for the town. So come down the hallway. As you can see, everything's spacious. Um, the kids have few, full view of the outside. We're gonna go through one classroom. It'll go right into the other classroom. And um, to sit here and have 
the playground that you could look out. It was very airy for the students. As you can see, all the classrooms are very well put together and, and big. These little boxes are actually got dirt in them and the kids were able to plant. This room was actually used for kindergarten and then later on they started the uh, preschool program. So as you can see, everything, they have the little things on the floor, their bathrooms, their sinks, and their little planting box. So which was kind of nice that the kids had a planting box in every classroom over here. And then it would go right into the next classroom, which would be the same thing. It would be either a kindergarten or a preschool into this classroom. I personally was told by uh, a builder that this building is um, very well built and that is, um, doesn't need to be actually taken down if somebody wants to just add on to it or whatever they want to use it for. But this building is sturdy, it's got great bones, and it actually does not need to be demolished. And that came from a, a contractor. So as you can see, beautiful. They did close out the skylights. I do have to tell you that because, and even if you had skylights in your house, if they're not, every once in a while they have to be resealed. So they just blocked off the skylights. So you can imagine a little kid, you have all these windows, you're looking out, you got the sun coming in off the, off the skylights. Very well thought of, even this the new addition. Of course, you have your little racks where the kids hung up their coats. You can almost still hear them echoing in the hallway. So this is our new addition, 1957. So now we're going to take a walk and we're going to go visit the old building, the original Rogers School. A lot of things have changed, but as you can see when we go into it, a lot of things have them. Right. The school was built in 1885, so, but as you can see, a lot of the things have not changed in the older building. So we're going to go upstairs and we're going to go check that out. Okay, this is our Rogers School. This is the original building dedicated in 1885. The students were amazed about this building. This building has over 30,000 square feet. It consists of four classrooms on each floor of the two floors and two office spates. On the third floor, you would find the auditorium, which is kind of crazy if you think about it this day and age, but the auditorium is on the third floor and the caretaker's apartment, which not all schools have, do they? They have a janitor's closet, but we actually have an apartment upstairs for the caretaker. Um, it has a full ba basement, we will bring you down there for a quick visit there. And Henry Huddleston Rogers had Mr. Briggs put in the plans that it would have a one foot concrete floor in the basement. So that was another one of those things for extra stability and water won't get in, what, whatever they needed. But a foot of concrete was on the floor downstairs. This um, building again, brick and stone to pretty much last forever. So come on down the hallway with me. The kids would actually come in these doors. That's w where they entered in this building. So come on down. We're gonna go see some of the classrooms. You would walk into the space. All the kids would hang up there. As you can see where the mocks are, that's where all their hooks to hang up their, their coats were. You would go into the classrooms. These classrooms are actually, they're all the same, but you would walk into the classrooms and you have this huge space here. This is one classroom. It's, it's amazing how big it is. Now each classroom had, they were able to adjust their own heat or air through the, using those chains, believe it or not to come in and out to have the air. And these windows were uh, uh, new to the building, but these were actually regular windows 
with that you could open and they had the big ballast inside and when you go upstairs and see the arches that was an arched window these windows replaced it replaced the original windows so this is how the classroom would be up the desks were actually screwed to the floor back then and they would be able to be adjusted so we're going to go through the classrooms this is another room so as you can see every classroom was connected so you can go from classroom to classroom I mean look at these big doors these are huge doors and on the inside you would see the original wood these and they never painted the inside of the door so look at this this is a solid door and look at the size Henry Huddleston Rogers he knew what he was doing and then again the chains that was to put the air in or the heat in and the teacher of course was in charge of that so when we walk through we'll go to the next room and each room was numbered as they were one two three four five six seven eight upstairs and each grade or particular section had its room primary one primary two and then you go up to grandma great the room eight was actually used for high school students so you walk through again as you can see they're, they're the same size everything was made the same way the Wayne's coating underneath that paint is the original woodwork anything that you see painted the original woodwork is behind it go to the next classroom this is the four classrooms on the first floor we'll go through this way and then we'll go up the stairs so when I said that each floor has two office space this is the office space they concentrated on the kids the students not who's going to sit in an office so this is your office space Tongue and groove up there. I mean, beautiful woodwork, but I wouldn't want to sit here all day. And I believe that was the meaning of all this. So the other office is just the same way. And as you can see, we still have the old light switches on the, um, the wall. Okay, we're on the second floor. There was a few of these in the building unfortunately some of them has deteriorated but they haven't moved this one and I'm afraid that if it is moved it might fall apart but he wanted to put things in this building for the kids to really understand so if we see this we all know what that is so I mean, he wanted to make sure that the kids knew about the Revolutionary War and how America became America so as you can see here this is their office space this happened to be a closet, but again, it's the woodwork. It's this that people have to understand the work that they put in this. To build this building, $100,000, believe it or not. That was a lot of money back then, but it, it meant that they spared no expense. Now we're gonna go down the hall, but I am gonna show you this. This is the actual walkway you can go up to the third floor but this is how the caretaker got into his apartment that's his staircase and again this is another classroom if you look at what was downstairs the exact same thing now when we had a walkthrough before and um, people were they actually had a little uh, tag sale people would write their names and what grade they were in um, the school so we thought that was pretty, you know, pretty interesting. Now, I will mention it again, but I'm going to mention it now, that we will have an open house on September 30th, Thursday, from 11 to 2 and 4 to 6. And we're also going to have it on Saturday, October 2nd, 11 to 2. But I will mention that again in the, in the tour. But we will have chalk and let the people write again on the boards. We thought that was very, very interesting. So, and they got a kick out of it. So back through. So as you can see, people wrote on the boards and the classrooms are huge, but he made it that way. When they had, when this school opened up, there was only 450 students 
And that's the town of Fairhaven. So he made it big for growth. And as you know from our first part of the tour, we kept growing, so that's why we had to do the addition. So again, there's people, they really like, the kids didn't look at this as an old building. They looked at it as this was their school. This was their home away from home. So as you can see with some of the writing, um, we even had somebody, class of 65, the teacher was here. And we had some quite a, we tried to get, see which ones are the older ones. I think 1965 is probably the oldest one that we have written on the board. But again, all the classrooms are the same, very spacious. I can imagine that there was, maybe there was only a few kids in this class at the time. But um, personally, I just, I love old architect and I love old buildings. So I can see, even now, the beauty of this building. Now, I don't know if, my, if you can get this, but I want to show you a hole. I don't know if you can get that hole, but there's a hole in the ceiling. And what came out of that hole was a rope. And they used to actually ring a bell to let them know school has started. So they would pull that rope and if you were lucky and one of the kids that got to pull the rope that was like the best of the best. But you would pull a rope and the bell would ring. So now we're going to go upstairs. Now this is interesting because they blocked off this stairwell. Now the reason why they blocked off this stairwell is simply after they built the addition, they had an auditorium. They had a big gym, an auditorium, and a huge stage. Upstairs, you're gonna find the old auditorium. And you can see why they blocked that off so the kids wouldn't go up there. The door was always shut, so just the caretaker can go up and down. So we're gonna go up, but we're gonna be careful because it is dark, and we're gonna show you what the auditorium looked like. Okay, so welcome to the auditorium. Now, I can't imagine all these little kids walking up those stairs. We didn't show you the stairs, but it was a little trick to get up here. This is the third floor. This is their auditorium. In, later on, they used it for the music class. Don't forget, I said that the addition was built in 1957. So once they didn't need this as the auditorium anymore, because they had that big gym and auditorium with a huge stage in the new addition. But as you can see, it's got a stage. They blocked that some stage is pretty big too. And this beautiful woodwork. This is just gorgeous. And if you've been in the town hall and you see when they put up the chairs for meetings or whatever, how they're connected and stuff, that's what was up here. They used the same stairs and of course they would have. Henry Huddleston Rogers built that too. So this is, um, this is the auditorium. It's beautiful. At least they didn't paint the waste coating here. But um, they used to have sewing classes and they did a lot of different things back then. I wish they would put some of that back into the school these days, but we'll see. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. The woodwork. Remember, this is 136 years old. Look at the woodwork. Not bad for 136 years. So I am going to actually show you next the caretaker's apartment because I'm sure people just don't understand. Henry Huddleston Rogers did that in the high school too. On the third floor, that's where the caretaker lived and took care of the school. I know it's a little dusty, and, um, but I did want to show you. These are the massive windows that was actually in the classrooms before they replaced them with the windows that you've seen with no um, vision on the top, just vision through the, the bottom. But these were massive windows. You can see where the rope was for the um, pulley to bring them up and down. But um, they kept the windows just to show people what this building really was back then. And in this little room, if you came up this little room, the doors, the doors just amaze me, I gotta tell you. I love these doors. Look at the size of this door. Not only tall, but wide. But if you went up here, all the way up, and there's more stairs, you would get to the belfry. And that's 
where the bell is. It's not there right now, but that's where it was. And they actually rang it to let to, you know that school has started. Oh, there's where the rope came in. I don't know what happened to the hole in the floor, but that's where the rope came in for the bell. But as you can see, it's, um, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. So let's go to the caretaker's apartment. That's interesting. We are going to go through, this is just a hallway, and it will take you to the caretaker's apartment. Um, mostly used for storage after a while, but um, I don't know where the lights are in that room, so I won't bring you there. But I will bring you through here. This would be considered the attic. So we're just going to be careful in here because I don't want um, Derek here to whack his head. So <laughs> look at the size of these beams. Just, just look around you. This is, they use this for storage. But um, the beams, look at, look at the, um, the bolts that's in here. 136 years, mind you. So we're gonna go through here. Now, if you had to go and check on the, um, the system through the boiler, everything would come up here. Now, you would have to have some air and then the two side, and you'll see it's like these little extension from the building, that's where the air would come in to run this system. And the caretaker had to go all the way up there and check on it. We will not do this on this tour. So, let's go this way. As you can see, he had free reign. This is um, the hallway. He could have done anything he wanted, and I am saying he, because at the time it was a gentleman. So we come up here. I would say this was probably just a little spare room for him. And he has the windows to look out to the attic, I guess. But um, this is a small room. If you come in here, I would think this was probably his bedroom. I um, particularly like the wallpaper. And I have to tell you, this wallpaper is probably 136 years old, too. But, um, yeah, this was his bedroom and the radiators and everything. So, that was his bedroom. And again, they left some of the windows so people can see what windows. See, this, look at the size of that. That was a regular window. Oh. Don't you? you like the wallpaper? So. Then he had his, his little closet, whatever, and the staircase, we're gonna go down. So I would say this is a nice little apartment. I mean, can you imagine living here? And this was his kitchen, small, but I believe it worked for him. A little sink. A nice view of outside, especially if those windows weren't there. Could you imagine just looking out to the playground? Well, the playground was there, but just looking out back in um, 136 years ago. This was probably, I would say, maybe a living room, a sitting room. I'm not really, obviously, I'm not really sure. And this is how they would pretty much call him in case they needed him. He would kind of like, hello, see this little thing? We're talking that, yes, what do you need? <laughs> I just can't imagine that, but that's what that is for. To notify him if there was a problem and then he could just answer them. It was almost like, you know, when you're a kid and you got the cups with the string. I guess that's kind of like the same, same thing. And then again, another little room. So this is um, definitely amazing because let's face it, you would never see an apartment in a school today. But um, this was his home, and he took care of the building, and he took his job very seriously. So I guess I wouldn't mind having a little place you don't have to pay for. And you get paid to live here, so how's that? So that's the caretaker's apartment, and that's something I don't think a lot of people even have an idea that this was here. So we're going to head up 
back downstairs. Yeah, the, the, the teachers would pull the chains, all this would come down, and it's all connected to those little things at the, on each side of the school. So this is pretty neat. I mean, everything was thought out. I mean, this is just perfect. His whole system of running the school and the heating system and everything and getting it airflow going was state of the art at that time. And in 2012, 2013, when the school closed, the boiler, everything was still running. Actually, it's still running today. So when the school's mothballed, we still have some heat flow going in so nothing um, freezes up. So they knew what they were doing, that's what I can say. But we're gonna show you the basement. We're gonna do a quick um, tour of the basement. We're gonna go quickly, but I do wanna tell you that the basement, that's where the kids had to go to the bathroom. The girls were on one side, the boys were on the other side, just like the Haven High School had. So the thought process was the same. And at, uh, um, as time went on, they even had um, art downstairs. But let's go check out the basement. So in 1957, or you know, in that time frame when they built the new addition, this is where they opened the school. There was a little bump out from the school for another exit door. However, they took it out and they put this area in so they could get down to the new addition, plus they put the staircase down to go into the basement. So from the basement onto the first floor, they took that part of the building down and put the two buildings together. So quickly down in the basement. Yeah, so in the basement, what we did was what the, com the reuse committee did. They got a company in here to totally clean it out. When the school department left the building, they did leave boxes and some wooden and all the petitions that were in there were all wood and sheetrock. So they sucked up the, um, the humidity and that was not good for the, for the building, for um, anything and that's what, how mold grows. But everything's taken out and everything's cleaned up. It was um, the Rusty crew, he, they did an awesome job. So let's go through. So you gotta understand that obviously things are peeling. So we're gonna go through quickly. Um, we're gonna need some light in here. Hmm. Well anyways, this is the way through. The janitor had his room in here. We, uh, as you can see, we have um, humid dehumidifiers going all the time. So come through here. They used this as, um, they blocked it off and used it as, um, I believe, art. But where we're standing right now, you would go to the boys' room. So the boys came down this staircase, and that's the boys' room. And then they turned this into um, either music or art. I, I don't really remember what it was. But as you can see, this area is big because it's the whole size of the building. And what you're standing on is a one foot thick solid cement floor. Now going through here, it's a little noisy because of the dehumidifiers. In the old days, I believe they had cold, so I think the cold would come in there. I'm not actually positive of that, but I do believe that was it. Now, down this staircase, the girls would go to the girls' room. So that's what they had to do to come to the bathroom. So if you're on the second floor, you've got to go through all those stairs to get down here. But you know what? They're kids, they're young, they can do it. As you can see, great lighting. They put enough lights in for the kids to see. And the uh, building was used um, to its full extent. Other than the peeling, beyond that, the paint, you would see the natural brick. Again, brick and stone will pretty much last forever. And Henry Huddleston Rogers knew that. And like I said, many a times through this tour, 136 years, that proves it. So that's a quick tour of the basement. We have our, our boilers, which are still running, obviously, to keep things going in the, in the building. And that boiler also runs the new addition. So we can head out. 
So this ends our tour. And as you can see, and I hope you feel the same way I feel, that this is a beautiful building and that you can see the work that Henry Huddleston Rogers had done. Just a reminder, we have an open house. It is October 2nd, 11 to 2, and September 30th, Thursday. And we're gonna have it on two different times, 11 to 2 and 4 to 6. And people will be asked to come in this door which will enter the reception room. So I hope everybody will um, join us at the uh, open house. Um, I do want to say that the Roger School Reuse Committee did a great job. They're doing wonderful things. And um, I really um, appreciate what they're doing. And as a resident of this town, I would like to keep it our old town village. So see you at the open house.